Greetings, Mickey 102 This is a video in support of the Week 10, I guess you can call it an investigation. It is uh, using Microsoft Word and images um, and how to put images into Word and so forth. That's the primary goal of the, the work this week. Um, a secondary goal is just to get some comfort and familiarity working with images. That's actually a very broad topic. Uh, if you want more information than what I'm about to show you here, there's a lot more you can find online. And in fact, the assignment talks about some other sources, other programs that you can use to do much more powerful video editing. I'm just going to show you some basic stuff. <clears throat> so the premise behind this assignment is, um, again, just to I wanted to give something that was a little bit maybe more interesting. It's This is out of the, the ordinary for the uh, Mechie 102 Studio. It's not using Excel or doing any kind of analysis, but it is working with Microsoft Word and putting images in there, which is a very common thing to do in laboratory reports to, to uh, document your procedure and your hardware and things like that. It's a very good skill to have. So I try to think of something here that I thought might be a little more interesting. And so here it goes. Uh, I like hiking in the parks in the region. There's one in particular, one of my favorite is Corbett's Glen Nature Park. And I've gotten into the habit of uh, taking and trying to identify some of the more interesting plants on these walks. I use an app called PlantNet and actually you can see here at the top of this uh, document there's a link to plantnet.org that actually has an online interface for taking you can you can upload an image of an of a plant a tree leaf or a fruit or something like that or a flower or um, leaves or stems of smaller plants and it will attempt to identify that. What it will actually do is present you with a bunch of pictures that you can see if they match. Uh, I actually installed the app. There's one for Android and iPhone. So I do it that way, but you could do it without actually installing the app. You could just upload the picture. So in any event, I went there, took a picture of what turned out to be this Virginia knotweed or jump seed. Um, so I basically created this uh, sort of document here that, that has a little bit of information about it and it has some pictures in it. You can see if I scroll down, it's got um, a screenshot I took from Google Maps and I've drew, drawn on here with some shapes about where it was found. I'll talk about that in a little bit here. Uh, I also have, uh, so I put a title at the top, a sentence that I wrote here about where I found it and how it was identified. Then you can see I took a couple sentences from Wikipedia and I actually put the citation from Wikipedia. Let me just show you that. If you actually go to Wikipedia, all I did was once I knew what it was from this uh, from this plant net, I just searched for jump seed Wikipedia, and it happened to have the the here's the Persicaria virginiana. I, I think that's how it's pronounced, the Latin name for it. Uh, but went straight to Wikipedia. There's some good information from it, and I'm highlighting here. There's the sentences that I took. There's a lot more information here. You don't need to go nuts with that. I just took a couple sentences to put in there. The point is just to have some kind of text on the document that we're going to combine some images with and show how to make them work together. That's the whole point. But I did take some information here. Um, well, I like Wikipedia in the sense that if you, over on the, the left-hand side here, there's usually a link that says cite this page if you click on that. It'll give you different ways, that you, citation styles, where you can actually point straight to the reference. I use the APA style because it's, why not? That's a common one. It's right at the top here. It's easy, but you could have your pick of different styles if you like, some of which I've never even heard of, and even some for BibTeX or this the LaTeX package even you could use. In any event, I took the APA style and just uh, pasted that into the document here to show where I got this from. So I've trying to, to to play close with the idea of retribution for where I, attribution excuse me for where I got this from so in any event um, that's the basics of this and I'm not saying I would have come about it from this particular direction but let's say I now want to put the image in here so I'm gonna say insert so that what I mean by that is the picture I took that was identified with my from my smartphone I'll say this device. So I I put it on a folder on my computer here. I was just called this. I took it as a screenshot as it, as it so happened from the app because I forgot to save the image, but it did put the image originally in the gallery. Um, all I'm trying to show you here, though, regardless of all this other talk before this, is I've got a Word document. I've got some text in here, or I'm going to put text in here. I want to get an image in here too. What's the basic process for working with them? 
So when I paste it in, it's actually giant to begin with here, and you can see that it. Uh, I probably could have taken a better picture, but it still worked anyways to get these, the identify the flowers. Uh, when it comes up, it's got the little uh, white handles all over it that you can use to resize it. It even has a little circle that you can use to rotate it. I don't want to do that. I'm going to undo that. Um, if you drag on a handle, let's say, on the sides, it will actually shrink it non-proportionally, which you don't want to do because now it's warped that image and it doesn't look remotely right. But if you drag on one of the corner handles, it will it will resize it proportionally. So let me make this smaller so that's a reasonable size here in my document. You can actually go up to now when you click on a picture, there'll be the tab that shows up in the in the ribbon called picture format. <clears throat> There's a lot of stuff you can see that's done here. You can play with this at uh, your, your leisure. Um, what I want to focus on now is on the very far right it has the size here. So if for some reason you were concerned with the actual measured size, you could click on these buttons and control that. Let's say I'll make it 2.8 inches wide, in which case, based upon how it was cropped out, it's 4.63 inches high. So I'll just tell you that when I took this picture off my phone and put it on my computer, um, I actually used another program. I use paint.net uh, and you could search for that if you want to. That is a free program. It's on Windows only. But I used paint.net to crop the image, which means I cut out part of it that looked to this shape here and got rid of some of the stuff around it that was part of the program. So um, this basic proportion was already set by my crop, which is why when I set 2.8 inches wide, it's 4.63 inches high. If you click the little button to expand this size option here, you can set absolute sizes here. You, there's right now a check by lock aspect ratio. If you uncheck that and now change one of the sizes, you can change only one at a time and it will lose your proportions. So I don't generally want to do that, but sometimes you might want to. I'm going to hit cancel here. So that's a basic concept of putting the image in a document. You can do some things such as crop here. So if I hit crop, it puts these black corner lines and side lines on here. And what that does, if you drag out, it will let you cut out a piece of the picture. So now if I were to unclick or click off to the side, you can see it actually cut out that part, cropped out just part. That's what I said I did in another program to begin with. So I don't want to do that here. I just want to show you that you could do some cropping in here. It's not quite as sophisticated in other programs, but it does work. Although it does have some sophistication that you can crop to shapes, which could be useful. I don't know if you want to crop to a heart shape. Um, I've never wanted to do that sort of thing, certainly not for technical documents, but it, it's, that's a pretty powerful feature, actually. Um, but this still right now, it, it is when you first paste in an image like this or insert an image here, it puts it right wherever your cursor was. And it is what's known right now as in line with text. So it looks like it's in this line with my title. And so there's all this space here because it's basically this picture taking up this huge space. And then on the same line, it puts the smaller text with it. And then you get the carriage return to the next line and so forth. So what I really want is I want this to have the look like you saw before, where this is kind of sitting in there on the wherever we want it. I had it in the on the sort of the top right, but the text was flowing around it. So if you go back, make sure you're on the picture format toolbar here. There's this pull down, this uh, selection called position. If you click and expand that, you've got options. The default where it is right now is in line with text. These other ones you'll see as I float over them will give you a preview of what it does and it will move the image. So this one, it actually didn't, actually I should say that didn't move the image. It left the image alone, but it shows now the text flowing around it. Here's if it's in the center, here if it's the top right, middle, center of the document, actually the center of the margins at this point, centered uh, vertically in the margins, it's aligned with the left on the leftmost margin. And that margin meaning the farthest edge of what it's going to see is the printable area on the document and so forth. Let me just click the one that says top right and that will place it there now permanently. It leaves it there. And now you can see the text flowing around it. So that's that whole idea of this being positioned like that. You can also then in there So you can also with that selected on this picture format toolbar, uh, there is below where position was located is this wrap text. 
I'm actually gonna you can if you click on it you can see some um, shortcuts here so right now by default is was a square and actually this inline with text would basically do the same thing as before so this is really just a repeat of the positioning sort of uh, square versus tight versus through things like top and bottom would actually wrap just to the top and the bottom um, let me go down and select more layout options that's really what I wanted to show you here for this text wrapping it shows now as the text is flowing around how it will do so in this case tight won't really make too much difference because it's it's already to the edge of the margins through doesn't seem to do anything top and bottom will because it will only allow it to flow between the over the top and the bottom which isn't tremendously different from inline with text except that the, the, the text will move around the picture and the picture isn't stuck in the same place with the text uh, behind text or in front of text square is what I primarily use the main thing I will do here is I sometimes adjust how much space appears between the image and the text so right now because I have this at the rightmost margin the text is only going to appear on the left so if I put more space on the left I'll show you what happens when I hit OK it wasn't terribly noticeable but it just shifted and, and some of the stuff now that didn't fit because it was too close to the image wrapped to the next line so that's not a terribly important thing but I do do that occasionally with images just if I want to make sure I, I have a little bit more space between the text and the image but that's the basic concept of working with images and at least putting them in here getting them in a particular place you want you can use this position to actually change where it is and if you use with text wrapping then it's got this flow of the text around it um, if it's in line with text then it won't do anything like that and it's it's much more stuck I will use the in line with text usually in scenarios where I want it to appear just maybe on a line all by itself but move completely with all the other stuff so the image I have at the bottom is not in line with text but it could work that way simply because there isn't space for the text to be around it anyway and it, the most I would want is maybe stuff above and below so to keep it in line with text would be perfectly fine but one thing is different is if this were in line with text and then I was putting more stuff above it such that this wouldn't fit on the page it would force the whole thing to go to the next page versus if I let the text flow around it the image would stay put and the text would adapt to move to the next page so that might be something if you don't understand the difference you might you might uh, play with that I just want to point out here um, this actually is an image that I just pasted in from again from Google Maps and added these shapes to it so and let me ungroup this because I had grouped all this stuff together and I'll show you the difference so I put the image in here that is at a position that's bottom in the middle then I used under insert and shapes I put in a circle and I, I got rid of the fill and just made it a thick boundary I put in one of these call outs at the bottom and put an arrow on the end that's where I had the one that says plant found here so just a couple of things that I used to label and indicate where on the trail I had found the plant so that actually is not that's the same idea as what uh, previous videos showed for creating schematics in PowerPoint remember we were using the shapes selection under this uh, illustrations um, uh, sub menu here on the, on the under the insert tab so it's the same thing in this case here it's a little bit harder to work with them in, in Windows though because you can't or sorry in uh, Word because you can't for instance just drag and select things the same way it doesn't give them the, the same sort of blank canvas it's got a the canvas here the blank part has a very specific layout of things and if you play with this at all you'll know what I mean by that but anyway, then I put the, the little the little oval here and this other label thing and then if I click so I click on the, the oval I'll hold down the shift button click the plant found here that label uh, the call out and then I'll click on my image from Google Maps and then I'm gonna go up to picture format and group the reason I'm doing that is so that this whole thing stays together wherever I do move it by the way I was showing you before selecting a picture and using this position toolbar to move it you don't have to you can just click and move it wherever you want now I must not have the wrap turn the, the text wrapping turned on because it allows me to place it over this other stuff and it doesn't make anything wrap so it must not have wrapped text it just has in front of text that's why so it's just going to stick this thing in front of the text if I say behind text you can see what it does 
that's not what I want here, but it may in some cases be what you want. This is a good example of how that wrap texting is working. If I do square, then it's going to force everything to wrap around it. Okay, so now as I move it down, you can see what it does. If I move it up here, it forces it to move around. It looks like it's top and bottom only because there's no room on the sides to wrap anything. But let me stop playing around with that and I'll put that at the bottom middle. And this is in essence what you're you're doing is, is creating something like this for your homework assignment that gives you some familiarity with working with the images. So do note the requirements there. Uh, the picture of your plant is supposed to be at least 1.5 times in height as it is in width. And again, if you go back to my picture format here, this is 2.8 inches wide. So let's see, 1.5 times that would be, what, 4.2? It's 4.63, so it definitely satisfies that. The only reason that requirement is there is so you get familiar with how to crop images and things like that. So that's the plant image, and then the one of your map is supposed to be the, the opposite way. The width should be one point, at least 1.5 times the height, so it's more of this kind of a style here. Uh, and again, just so you get used to the idea of how to crop things and, and so forth. Um, also, and again, make sure you are setting it up so that you've got the flow of the text as it shows. Something doesn't have to be exactly like this, but it must be set up in such a way that the text does wrap around it. That was one of the requirements as well. So that's that. Thanks for watching.